record our social justice leadership series workshops uh, because we do put them on our websites. And so students and Tamiya community can always log back in um, on the website and they can see our workshops. So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Nayeli Lopez. I recognize a lot of names, um, people in today's session. If you haven't met me, I am the assistant director here at the Office of Student Orientation, Leadership and Engagement. And so one of our programs that I'm very, very passionate about that we just started in September is the Social Justice Leadership Series here at Tammy U. So we're gonna go ahead and begin and talk a little bit about the actual Social Justice Leadership Series program. And then we will introduce our speakers for today. So let's go ahead and begin a little bit about our program here. Hold on. There we go. Let me make sure that you can see this. Great. Thumbs up. Can everybody see this? All right. So a little bit about the social justice leadership series program we have here at Tammy U. Thank you, JJ. Thank you for the thumbs up. Is we created this initiative at Tammy U because we are recognizing that a lot of institutions nationally have had a rise of reports of discrimination, student protests, where they feel their voices are not being heard. And so nationally institutions face social justice issues and equities in order for our institution to live up to its mission. We must continuously provide resources and support to our students, our faculty, our staff, and our administrators. So we must have a critical eye on where our institution stands and how we can effectively provide education opportunities for all. And so through the sole office, uh, we've created a social justice leadership series here. As you can see in our presentation, here are some of our values. We value service, respect, growth, power, privilege, oppression, and identities, right? And so we want to incorporate a variety of uh, values here. Through the social justice program, we have cultural heritage month events, um, and we engage in conversations about power, privilege, oppression, and identity, and what that looks like in different groups. Um, so that's a little bit about the social justice leadership series. We are always looking for different offices, different professors, different student groups to collaborate and have these conversations, which are very, very important to talk about power, privilege, oppression, and social justice. As a friendly reminder to all, all of our students who are attending today, if you attend six, a minimum of six out of our 12 social justice programs this academic year, you can apply to become a social justice leadership ambassador for the fall semester. And so we are looking for students who uh, to become social justice leadership ambassadors. Also, if you've attended at least six of the programs this academic year, you will, be recognized, you will be recognized at the Emerging Leaders Celebration. So just something to think about. And before I move on, I will kindly ask everybody to please put yourself on mute. Um, thank you so much. Alrighty, so a couple of definitions that we'd like to review before all of our programs is the definition of social justice. So what does social justice mean? Here we define it as inclusion of everyone in the full benefits of society and empowerment of people to participate fully, keyword fully, in the economic, social, and cultural life of the country. And so as we go on today, I want you to think about social justice and how it may relate to Arab Heritage Month, right? So think about that throughout today's uh, presentation. Also power, I want you to think about power. Here we have it as the ability or official authority to decide what is best for others, right? Power, the ability to decide who will have access. Keyword here is access to resources, the capacity to exercise control over others. So as we go on in today's presentation, think about how power relates to Arab, Arab Heritage Month. Um, we're gonna be talking a lot about different topics within Arab Heritage Month. Privilege, this is something very um, important, right? And as we know, Privilege looks different in a variety of different identity groups. Privilege, we have unearned access to resources only readily available to some people as a result of their advantage social group membership. So think about privilege and how that may relate uh, to Arab culture. And lastly, we have here oppression. System that maintains advantage and is advantage based on social group membership and operates either intentionally or unintentionally on individual, institutional, and cultural levels. 
And so I know that a lot of you that I have attended today have seen these definitions before, and we've been talking about these topics since September, but this is just a reminder and a refresher for all of our participants here today. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and present today's speakers. So today's workshop is in collaboration with the Arabic Club Student Organization here at TAMU. Today we're going to have Dr. Khaled uh, and now Khaled um, present, and as well Ms. Uh, Gada Fahil, who are professors here at TAMU, who are going to be presenting on Arabic Heritage Month. And so please help me give a warm welcome to our professors and presenters for today. Hi all, nice to see you all, and yeah, thanks for being here. Wow, that looks nice. Yeah, this hand clapping. <laughs> all right, so uh, yeah, thank you. So today we'll uh, yeah we'll we're, we're happily gonna uh, speak about the Arabic culture, and uh, this is the Arabic Heritage Month. Oh, which actually started about it uh, like four years. Can you hear me? Okay, great. Yes. Uh, so, uh, yes, yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll discuss it, me and, and uh, Ms. Gata, uh, and we'll talk about some um, culture aspects. Uh, but I, I want to, um, to encourage something from the beginning. If you have any question at any point, just ask it, because when it gets to culture, there are so many aspects that we can talk about. And, uh, you know, I'm sure we, uh, everyone have a different interest, and maybe some have uh, specific questions they want to ask, and they, they, they may need an answer for it. So uh, at any point you uh, you feel that you you want to ask a question, either raise your hand or uh, text. I don't know how what the the, uh, the protocol goes in here, uh, but just ask it. Uh, we did our best trying to have it to fit in time, but as I mentioned, there are so many aspects. So we tried to get like mainly like the headlines about uh, most of the common questions about the culture. Um, so yeah, that's uh, what I have as uh, an introduction, and uh, I just got to introduce yourself and say something before I share. Okay, my name is Gada Fihel, uh, and I will present uh, Arabic um, culture today with uh, Dr. Inna, and also if you have any questions. Uh, Thank you, Ray. Okay. Uh, all right, so I hope you all see uh, our PowerPoint. All right, great. So uh, uh, we'll start by talking about the Arab Americans uh, because uh, we're in the month of Arab heritage, which is uh, uh, to celebrate or like to uh, highlight uh, and talk about the Arabs in the US and uh, the, uh, in Canada as well, like North America. So um, Arab Americans or Arabs in general, in general are referred to the people who speak Arabic, Arabic language. And uh, the countries that speak Arabic, that we there are 22 countries that speak Arabic, and they are uh, located in the Middle East, which is the uh, northern part of uh, Africa, and uh, uh, the west part of, uh, of Asia, the southern and west uh, part of Asia, as you see in the PowerPoint. And most of the Arab Americans were born in the United States. And as a, um, a fact, if you speak Arabic and you know about the culture, you became an Arab, that simple. That's literally, this what distinguishes a person from being an Arab to any other uh, language-based uh, segregation, which is uh, for, for Arabic. So if you are learning Arabic, you're an Arab, simple and easy. <laughs> uh, so there are so many aspects, as I mentioned, that we will try to cover. So uh, literature, language, cuisine, art, architecture, composition, religion, philosophy, uh, music, and all these are parts from, uh, of the cultures, and it was affected by the language, uh, the, uh, the, the geographic location of the Arabic countries, uh, and that also will affect the culture to be changed, not only from country to country, but also you will have different cultures from uh, different areas in the same country. And most of the time, the north part and the south part may have uh, different cultures, also different dialects and, and uh, speaking uh, language. And the history of sure has affected the, the culture as well. So for example, when you go from uh, Saudi Arabia to uh, uh, Algeria or Morocco, those are totally two different uh, cultures and, and perspectives. 
and the dialect like for example uh, Moroccan they speak a lot of Spanish and French and the Arabic has a lot of uh, or got influenced a lot by those two languages so when you they speak uh, you may have a better chance to understand their dialect if you understand or if you know French and, and Spanish uh, compared to the the, the eastern part uh, where uh, Arabic is, is more is, is uh, still Arabic was not influenced by any other language I will try to touch base on those, and I uh, please bring questions uh, whenever you have them. So the 22 countries um, that uh, uh, are listed here, which are speaking, uh, which are Arabic-speaking countries, and uh, based on the census data from 2006 and 2010, those are the numbers of the uh, Arabs from uh, those heritages, and uh, I think only like the the the, the higher population. Are, are mentioned here. So you can see Lebanon is the highest with 485,000, almost 486,000 uh, Arab Americans live in the US. So uh, yeah, there is a, a huge number of big communities and in, in some areas, uh, especially in, it's well known like Dearborn in, uh, in, uh, Dearborn in, in uh, Michigan is known to have the, the largest uh, uh, Arabic uh, population Arabic society so when you go there uh, I hear that even the, the the police cars are have police written in Arabic so it's it's very large uh, community uh, what are what race are Arabs so Arabic as I mentioned earlier it's not a race and therefore you will find uh, different uh, skin colors different hair uh, colors um, uh, eye colors so there is no specific race in the Arabic world. Uh, it, it vary, it's very, it's similar like if you look at the, um, the US population, it have a similar uh, diversity, uh, all skin colors and, and, and all, uh, all other uh, racial aspects. So we cannot distinguish it based on, um, on, on the race. Uh, religion, uh, uh, most of the Arabic countries will have a diversity in religion, uh, all of them actually. Uh, but the, the largest three uh, religions in the Arabic uh, countries will be listed from uh, like the largest number to uh, the like kind of rank it. Start with Islam, which is the most uh, of the Arabic countries have uh, uh, predominant by uh, Muslims. And second is Christianity and third is uh, Judaism. And uh, I will stop at this slide and I will mention one important aspect or misconcept that always happen when people um, get confused or confused between the religion and the, the, the Arabic culture. So there is the religion restrictions, which uh, another uh, circle of culture was built around it. And there is the, the language uh, 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 culture that was built uh, even before the, the Islam gets into the, the Middle East. So those two always are, are uh, crossover. And most of the time you learn about, oh, Arabs do this. And in fact, it may have nothing to do with Arabs. It's just by Muslims. That's why I mentioned here that there are some uh, Muslim uh, majority countries which are not Arabs, such as Turkey and Indonesia. So uh, you may see some cultures from there which are, are shared with Saudi Arabia, for example, and Indonesia doesn't speak Arabic, while Saudi Arabia speaks Arabic. So uh, one of the most important things I would like to uh, to let you know all, all about is when you are to learn about the Arabic culture, make sure that whatever you learn uh, to 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 see if it's if it got influenced by the religion or it's just the culture. So uh, and that uh, that that fact uh, makes it uh, a very rich culture. There's so many aspects and there are so many uh, changes. Based, uh, uh, which get influenced by religion, uh, 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 language, and also the ge uh, geographical location, as I mentioned, Northeast and, and different countries. So that's why you'll you'll see so many uh, differences within the same country. Uh, Well-known Arab Americans um, just got some some from here. Uh, so I don't know who you know from these. Uh, but, uh, we have uh, Krista. Um, Mikhalif and Rabi Rahal, uh, Candy Lighter, uh, Tony Shaloub, uh, Paul Orfella, 
and uh, Jake is not sorry. And also, I'm sure most of you uh, will probably know Mina Masoud. He's not uh, American, but he's Canadian, uh, but he's very popular by his light blitz movie, Aladdin, right? And uh, for sure, uh, Dr. Ahmed Zouil, uh, he's a, a Nobel Prize awarded in chemistry. And uh, all these are Americans who, uh, who contributed to the community and they are uh, well known and they contributed a lot to the American community or like the North American community. And there are much more of these. Uh, most of the time you don't even recognize that they are from um, Arabic heritage. So uh, they are, uh, this is not strange uh, if you compare it to the, the large number of the population that I mentioned earlier. So Lebanon, for example, saw uh, I think like uh, four out of those of uh, four of these seven, seven uh, figures are from Lebanon, almost 500,000 people in the U.S. in 2010. So with the new census, they may have doubled. So uh, we we always hear Arab, Arabic, and uh, Arabian. Uh, so uh, Arab is a noun uh, uh, for a person who speaks Arabic, and Arabic is the language, Arabian is, adject is the adjective. And as a nationality, it may refer to Saudi Arabia, but not, not, um, not necessary. Um, most of the time they use Saudi or Saudi Arabian. Um, yeah, that's for that one. And then uh, common misconceptions, I think, yeah, I'm get out, you want me to do it? Okay. <laughs> So uh, uh, there are so many misconceptions, uh, conceptions, and this is normal, not just for Arabs. I think it's, uh, it came from the, the fact that uh, as a human, a humans, most, most of the time, we, we love to do stereotyping. Uh, so a um, number of those misconceptions, and if you learned about, or if you experience any of those, uh, let us know. So let's see how many of these misconceptions can we correct. So uh, all Arabs are Muslims. Who have uh, thought that all Arab, Arabs, are, Arabs are Muslims or and generally learned it somewhere? Anyone? Okay, we get one. No one else? Okay, that's nice. Uh, so based on the uh, religion-wise that I, I mentioned, like there's a high diversity in religion. Uh, while the majority is Muslims, but uh, uh, Christianity, uh, uh, Christians has uh, a, a, a good representation. So in Egypt can, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm, most of the time I will, I will link it back to Egypt because uh, this is uh, where, where uh, uh, my heritage is from. So in Egypt, there's about 20% of the population are, are Christian. And uh, actually, yeah, I would love to go back to, I had the picture here, yeah, this, this picture. So uh, this picture to the right is for a, a synagogue in Algeria. Uh, because uh, the the uh, Judaism is is more uh, are, has more population to the west part of Africa, Algeria, Tunis, and and uh, Morocco. Um, while the the picture to the left, you may see uh, to the right is the mosque. Those two uh, large columns are for the for the mosque, where it, the, those columns are used to call for the prayer. While to the left, you can see the dome for the church. So uh, in Egypt and in most of the Arabic countries, you'll find the mosque and in front of it, you'll find the church. So mosque is a, the place of worship for Muslims. Church is a place of worship for Christians. And they, they live, uh, I mean, one, one community, one family um, for so, so many years. I mean, uh, since Islam get into that area. Um, so, uh, uh, yes, the majority are, are Muslims, but not everyone is a Muslim. And for sure, there are atheists and there are some other beliefs, uh, but we're talking about the, the, the common uh, um, religion in those areas. Uh, the Arab uh, world is uh, backdrawed and uncivilized. All right, I will ask this question. How many of you, whenever you hear about Egypt, you think about the desert and the camel? Yeah, we don't ride camels anymore. Well, you can ask. Yeah, right? So many people are, I want to go to Egypt to, to ride a camel. Uh, yes, we also go to the pyramids to ride camel, <laughs> but this is not our daily ride. Uh, similarly, when you're like about Saudi Arabia, when you're like, uh, maybe nowadays in the past few years, uh, uh, United Arab of Emirates, or most of you may know it as Dubai, uh, it's one state in the United Arab Emirates, has changed that picture. 
But what's fun is most of the people think that this is not part of the Middle East. Now it's a part of the Middle East, it's a, uh, um, an Arab speaking country. And in all the countries uh, you'll find uh, it's very civilized. Uh, people live normal life. Uh, but you know, most of the time when you, uh, you do advertising for the uh, tourists, you want to highlight these parts. So uh, uh, while there are some areas are uncivilized, which is true, and this is a fact in, in, in all countries, uh, but most of the country are uh, civilized and, and uh, very well uh, civilized and, and organized. Um, actually, yep, yeah, uh, this is what I highlighted. Uh, terror, terrorists. All right, how many have learned that Arabs are terrorists? <laughs> uh it it has some history uh i know and um it's 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 not a fact and uh, uh the the small sample i showed for the well-known um arab americans you saw where they are like an astronaut and, and, and a nobel uh winning prize but you know uh every every community have sometimes um, people make bad decisions uh but that cannot be stereotypes uh, for sure and this is uh, one of the things that lately, um, you know, I'm personally glad that most of the media, most of the people have talked more about it and it got, it got to, to, to improve. And um, yeah, uh, terrorist is as simple as terrifying other people, uh, other people and, and, and risk their lives. So it's not related to color or, or, uh, or uh, ethnicity or, or anything. Um, so it just, it's the matter of the act itself. Uh, the Arab world is one, uh, big desert. Yeah, we have big desert, but as I mentioned, we have so civilized areas. Um, and, uh, those are the, the main, uh, most mis misconceptions, uh, conceptions. Um, yeah, I don't know what else have you heard. So let's try to have it more interactive. It looks like I've been speaking, speaking and kind of rushing because of the time. So uh, let's take a, a pause and, and listen to some questions. Uh, what are your uh, 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 concepts about the Arabs? What, what do you think about Arabs? Who are Arabs? What they do? Uh, yeah, I look crazy, but that's, that's <laughs> not because I'm Arab. So uh, yeah, I love to hear the questions. No? I don't have a question, uh, Dr. Anna, but uh, I'm so appreciative of every all the information that you're sharing. Um, I'm learning a lot as I continue to learn, right? More about uh, different cultures and backgrounds. Um, I do want to say that first misconception there, I think it's, I think, you know, I, I think a lot of people are just from my experience, right? You know, like you mentioned, a lot of people think that all Arabs are Muslims or all, um, all Muslims are Arabs, right? Um, and I remember a couple years ago with my partner, he's Nigerian and, and his family, uh, who identifies as black, um, his extended family are Muslims. And so I was like, wait, what? I like had to like learn a little <laughs> bit. This was a couple years yeah. ago. Um, and so uh, I think that misconception, at least for me, I've had that misconception years ago. And so I think it's a learning moment for uh, many people. And uh, so thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Great. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it's, it's great to hear that because now we're doing about Arabic heritage culture. Uh, if we were to do about Muslims, it would be a totally different uh, story because yeah, that's that's true. Uh, and also the other way around, not all Arabs are Muslims, there are uh, Christian Arabs, there are uh, Jewish Arabs, and then furthermore, yeah, so yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, okay, um, yeah, maybe later, uh, because one of the, the, the hot topics that always kicks in is uh, the women right in the Arabic culture and, uh, and so, so we'll keep it to the end. So uh, I'll hand it to uh, Ms. Gara to continue next part. I'll see you after she. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Enel. Uh, okay, you will share. Or... Okay. Share. Okay. I'm sharing. Okay, I will talk about language in Arab world. Uh, language is uh, a distinguished feature of the Arab world 
like most of you like know that Arab uh, joined together by the Arabic language. But like there is two um, forms of Arabic, uh, the two main varieties of Arabic, spoken Arabic, and which is different from country to country, including vocabularies uh, uh, from surrounding region. Uh, at school, Arabic speaker uh, learn the formal Arabic. The formal uh, the formal Arabic is look like the English one. You know that. Uh, the, the formal English is uh, in uh, schools. You may find it in some scripts, in journals, in uh, magazines. And so the same like Arabic language. Arabic language, you have spoken language. It, it's different from uh, country, country to country, from uh, place to place. If you if you want uh, to learn the dialect, you have to be like to to find which country you want to learn about which dialect. So uh, mostly when uh, we speak, we speak with um, like in the Arabic class, we speak in the modern standard Arabic because it's uh, it's understood in every country. So uh, also Arabic scripts read. If you want to read Arabic, you have to know that Arabic you read from right to left. It's really different than English. I have like an example for my book here. If, if I give you this book, you will say like some people say, OK, so it's backward. No, this is Arabic. I read from right here. This is the first part and and this is the second part from right to left. This is the Arabic language. Uh, the alphabets of the Arabic, we have uh, 28 characters or letters, uh, like which is written, uh, read and understood in the classical form spoken Arabic has also undergone re uh, regional and dialects in the dialects of oh, uh, variations. Okay, so I'm not sure if you know, like there is similarities between the Arabic and the Spanish language. Uh, so are you ready to see if there is any similarities between Arabic and Spanish or not? Okay, let's sh share this video. I can't hear the sound. There is sound, yes. Try again. Yes. Just sharing. <laughs> Sound. I don't know if anyone have experience, experience with this. this. Is there? Can you hear? No, didn't help. I'm trying to <laughs> figure out how to share with them. Share the video sound. You may find the sound. Good. Okay, yeah, so, so it looks like, like we have, have uh, to read the words. words. So, so this is uh, uh, most of you, you know the Spanish, Spanish words, right? right? So, so for pants, can, can someone tell us what uh, how to, to say pants? Pantalones. <laughs> so so else? Pantalon. Pantalon. Yes, it's close. Yeah. Okay, where is that my sound? There's no sound. Okay. Okay, so what about shirt? Camisa. Camisa. Camis. We said camis. 
Sugar. Azúcar. Azúcar. Guitar. Guitarra. Guitar. Cooking oil. Aceite. Aceite. I'm trying to point <laughs> because uh, the sound, yeah. There is. Can you try to show the, uh, the sound? Okay. Okay. Like, because I have a lot of things I want to share, but with voice, so I'm not sure <laughs> how it will work. Okay. Uh, you may say uh, see some people like men or men and we wear something or like kind of clothes or anything on their head. So what is this thing? This thing. It's a, a traditional, it's not religious. Uh, you may talk about it if you want. Right, right so, um, so um, we, we, we started, started with, with this one, one for a reason, reason. Uh, because, uh, because we started with the garment where men, well, it's what's more popular is uh, women to, to, to put the hijab, right? But in fact, as, as a part of the culture, culture men as well use this cover, uh, cover. And it varies from area to area. It's very from area to area based on the, on the country or like the, sometimes even the tribe, which tribe you're from. So the ones I have here, I have uh, uh, Palestine, Jordan, uh, Al Bahrain, and Yemen. Uh, I think the culture started and came because of the fact they, they live, live in the desert, desert and they have. Uh, uh, I think, I think my, my, my song, song is, is a bit So uh, uh, the fact that they live in the desert and most of the time they use it for uh, to, to cover their faces to uh, protect them from the sun. Uh, and it's known as uh, kafiya or kofiya. It's as uh, very popular. It would be in uh, either black and white color, uh, red and white color, or green and white color. Uh, it's very popular and has so many meanings uh, link uh, people to their tradition and, and their heritage. And then uh, we'll talk about the women. So yeah, I'll talk about this one. Okay. So why uh, do some Arab women wear cover uh, on their uh, head? The first thing, this cover called hijab. It's a different kind of. Uh, of like colors and styles, like this is they look like the ones that I wear here. It's hijab. This is the name. It's a religious practice related to Islam or Christianity. This this thing, and not specific in our uh, tradition. Uh, can you show the second one, mm -hmm. Doctor Ina? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, clothing in the Arab world, clothing, we'll talk about clothing now. Clothing is different than the hijab. Clothing is with different styles. It's a reflection uh, of personality, identity, and culture. Uh, the important aspect in Arabic society is the question of how to uh, dress. Like there is uh, some style, like I also have. Uh, Okay, so I will not. I will try to put yeah, it because most of the things that I prepared with sound and videos, so I'm not sure if we can do it. Yeah, but there is uh, some styles for the clothing. We'll try. Can we share it? Sound. Hopefully. 
see. Share. Let me send it and yes. Are you here? Hello? Sound is on here. No, maybe it's a sound. It's kind of style, different style for men and women, but it's not. Can a suggestion, you maybe you can share the link on the chat yeah. and that way we can see it. Give us a minute or two. Yes. Share a link. What is the point? Is it Arabic word? This usually derives from the Arabic definite article. What is this? Do you hear it? Is it? You know? I think it's only this one. When we meet you go I'm always on my phone. There's this way that that's what we're gonna see. If other people Do you hear the, the video or no? So everyone, were you hearing the uh, audio? We heard it, but it, it like went away already. But I posted the link in the chat, Dr. Anab and Professor so Fatia. So the, the link is on the chat. All right. So let's go back to the presentation then. to do I think you're in mute professor uh professor I think I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay so okay. things, to do, things do to do in Arab society uh, because you should know you that should know you that. should respect the privacy and protect it uh, rule of women in Arab society. Uh, men stand when uh, enters the, the woman enters the room. It's kind of uh, respect for her. Uh, all uh, like you you may hear about it in uh, in uh, the Arabic is the Arabic culture. Like mostly, uh, if you if you if you go to anywhere uh, or any. Uh, 
to any family that's related to uh, uh, Arab um, to uh, Arab family or uh, in her, in the house, you will find the two spaces, two living room, maybe two living room, two spaces, two places, uh, two areas, one for women and the other uh, or the other one for men uh, during gathering. Uh, so like it's different area. You should you should know this. Like respect the different living area for men and women. So this is really important. Uh, don't expect women to eat or socialize more in the same room uh, with men. Like uh, he's a stranger and you're supposed to uh, respect uh, her privacy. This is the uh, woman in uh, and the woman in the Arab world. The second one, please. <clears throat> also, the things that uh, don't do when you see a, a, a woman in a report. Uh, don't shake hands with any woman. Just wait first for her to offer her hand first. Uh, she may accept to to uh, shake hands or not. Okay, so just wait if you see she she may accept that or not. Uh, uh, also, don't touch, don't hug, don't talk to her. Uh, uh, you should make a, like a special uh, like distance between you and her. Uh, like especially I'm talking about uh, men and women. Uh, uh, don't talk in uh, in uh, public to any professional or woman unless it's business related. Uh, also, don't try to engage a woman in conversation unless you have been formally int introduced. Don't uh, don't uh, stare at women or uh, maintain eye contact. The eye contact is a really important thing because when you talk too uh, much to any woman, it's kind of uh, disrespect and it's it may it may um, uh, may do like a big problem for uh, for you or also for her. Uh, don't ask a. Uh, an Arab question, uh, any Arab, like mostly the men, you, you, we are talking about men now, don't ask any man or any husband about his wife or um, any female or any uh, female member in his uh, in his family. And the second one. So just uh, mention it because we ran out of time. So uh, you may see that from this, it looks like like some people may see it as a restriction for women, and some others see it as more power for women, since they, you know, they, you know, they, they have the control, have so control, they say, so yes, they or say no. yes or no. But in fact, but in fact it's, it's depending on how you feel, and this and part, this part of, of, of mute. mute. And, uh, and that would uh, be, that would be uh, like all these restrictions or all these uh, guidance are based on the, the combination of the culture. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> the Arab culture and the Islamic culture. So, uh, like when both get combined, most of these restrictions uh, get in. Uh, you will be surprised, and that may be a different topic, is if you go even back in the Arabic, uh, um, the Middle East, and the Arabian uh, um, uh, islands before Islam, most of these uh, culture were existed. They were not new. And even some of them go back to the uh, like older ages, like some other topics that we didn't mention here goes back to the pharaohs. So uh, uh, and that highlights the same point that I I, I I I highlighted at the beginning is combination between the religion and uh, the the region culture is what builds the Arab culture. So uh, we'll continue with the food. We'll try. I think we get into the fun part. So uh, let's see. Uh, food, like uh, the first thing about the food, I will talk about the uh, restricted uh, food by Islam. Uh, so you like if you hear Muslim, you supposed to know like they don't eat any pork, any gelatin, any um, <laughs> coronavirus animals. This <laughs> is uh, something mentioned also, but 
mostly the pork if you offer uh, any food for uh, your friend or uh, someone you know and he is um, from our culture please ask him first if you eat pork or not he it's mostly he's he's not eating any pork or um, uh, uh, gelatin anything with gelatin or uh, what's the other thing <laughs> okay for also alcohol alcohol is forbidden by Islam, so we can't drink. Uh, meat, the meat uh, uh, must be uh, pictured in line with uh, Quranic, uh, with the Quran. We, sh we, we say about it, it's halal food, halal uh, chicken, halal meat to, uh, to eat it. Uh, this, this picture uh, reflects a kind of uh, some uh, some food, like some some uh, dishes here. This is the Arabic food. This is how the uh, how the food look like. Uh, Just have a guest. Yes. When you have a guest, you you would like expect too much food, too much food, and uh, people uh, like eat too much, and uh, they 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 still put food in front of you and welcome you, and it's kind of. <laughs> Uh, like warm, warm, um, it's a warm culture. They say, always eat, please eat, please drink. You you can't sit like uh, like like this and don't eat anything. It's you have to eat and drink. And if they offer anything, you have to eat or drink. If not, this means like kind of uh, disrespect. Uh, I I prepare I also uh, a video, but I'm not sure if you can hear it. Where is the video? It's not. Okay. Okay. Just, okay. I think we may share the video, the links at the end. And uh, probably if you have questions, we can get it later. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. For the, the yes. When, when, uh, like mostly, I, I, like most people ask about uh, marriage in, uh, in the Arab society. It's mostly uh, goes to the men, to the, the the very expensive part goes to the men, not the woman. Usually, uh, a man will uh, will have only like the first thing about uh, marriage. Uh, like you may hear that how people uh, marry four women at the same time. Like it's it's um, it's restricted. Like it's not like for everyone to marry four women at the same time. They uh, they have only one wife, but they can have up to four in Islam. However, uh, he must be able to financially provide for them, but not only financially, but there is some res uh, restricted after the, uh, under the Islam. Uh, the marriage the ceremony, the marriage ceremony is often uh, conducted by the Imam. Imam, this is the person that he puts the contract, the celebration, can uh, last for several days and uh, uh, like typically the marriage contract is signed prior to the ceremony and the contract cover what both the bride and groom will contribute to the marriage and possible division of the uh, property in case of uh, divorce the husband is expected to provide the house they will live in um, he is he also expected to provide the food, clothes for his wife and for the future family. So this is the most expensive part. He will uh, pay for her before before uh, they marry. Uh, also, he will uh, he will find the house, pay for the house, uh, pay for her food, buy, uh, pay for her uh, clothes, pay for her jewelry, everything and. And just uh, she goes to uh, to the house. Yep. Okay. Just yes. Uh, yeah, marriage is is a very uh, not complicated, but it's, but it's very interesting, interesting topic to speak, speak about it. when we talk about the Arabic culture. Uh, and uh, the two parts. The first part, which is like the contract, and that's for Muslims to be done by imam for uh, in the masjid and if in the mosque. If for for uh, uh, Christians will be in uh, in uh, the church by the uh, uh, the father of the church, 
And uh, this is the first part. The second part, which is a celebration, is similar. So you, when you walk to any of, of the weddings, you may not notice like uh, big differences. And uh, when we get to the like the the, the nature of the uh, the marriage life, it 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 will be different because as the Arabs from the older culture, even before Islam, uh, men were the the household. So the man is responsible to provide everything uh, to make sure or to provide a, a, a convenient life for his wife and his kids, uh, while the woman take care of uh, of the man and the, uh, the the family and raising up the kids to the the best way. Uh, nowadays, change, uh, things change it, but those uh, wide lines are stayed the same. And then, uh, uh, for example, until now, most of women work. Men works, but uh, they have uh, separate financial uh, uh, um, identity or, 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 or uh, yeah, I'm losing the, the word. So everyone, the man has his own uh, financial uh, um, situation, status, and the, 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 the wife as well, whatever. So man has to spend and, and take care of the whole house while the, when woman works, they're not responsible to to put any money in the house unless they want, which is uh, is, is is a good thing. I I I, I mean as, as you see it because uh, that was the, the agreement at the beginning. You'll be responsible for this. I'll be responsible for that, and that helps uh, thing to 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 proceed. So this this part uh, of the culture, uh, as as I mentioned, um, any any questions? Because I think we run out of time, right? Okay. So, so music, music we'll probably share this, this link. Yes. So there are some uh, like, uh, uh, instruments that we use in the Arabic music, uh, different than uh, uh, the U.S., such as uh, Daoud, uh, which you'll see in the video, and or the Nai, which is one type of uh, floating, and uh, we have the Kanun which is similar to a piano, but in an older fashion. So they, they provide uh, different sounds and this is what make the, uh, the music and the, uh, and the Arabic college um, are distingui uh, like distinguished. Um, later on, maybe when you learn about other cultures, you may notice that most of these instruments has been used in the Mediterranean area. Because, you know, culture is always influenced by other, uh, uh, like neighbors and other uh, nations around it. So uh, uh, you, you'll note that the, the Arabic music maybe is closer to uh, Turkish music, maybe uh, Greece music. So all these are come from the same area. So uh, that's something to consider. Uh, we have also a video for uh, cultural dances. Uh, there are specific dances and you'll notice uh, there are the men dances and there are the women dances. Uh, getting back to the point that um, we got to mention before, the fact that uh, um, most of the gathering will be segregated, men and, and, and women. So they will have uh, their dances and the, the women will have uh, their own dances. Uh, Ramadan, yeah, that was the most important part that we want to talk about today, but I think we went uh, longer because we want to share more. So Ramadan is, uh, while it's an Islamic uh, event, it's a whole month, and actually it started yesterday, and it lasts for 30 days, where Muslims uh, uh, fast from uh, uh, sunrise to sunset, from dusk to, uh, to uh, night to dusk. And uh, no food, no water. So it's similar like the intermediate fasting uh, routine that uh, existed a couple of years ago. Uh, but with the fact that no even water, nothing. So, uh, and uh, not just food, uh, Muslims are uh, prohibited from uh, getting into arguments or, or fights as much as possible, uh, not to use any bad words. So mainly it's an opportunity for every person to, uh, to get back on a control of himself. Uh, so it starts with food and, and get more, uh, much more expensive. Um, while it's an, 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 a religion event, but when you go to uh, Arabic countries, you'll find all the people celebrate it. 
So in Egypt, for example, and the thing I was showed in, uh, in one of the videos, you'll find that uh, Christians share the same uh, uh, culture parts. So uh, we hang uh, decorations, not just Muslims, uh, but the decorations, also Christians and Jewish people, the decorations. Uh, they share the, the meal, they invite, invite each other. And also, um, most of the time, what's popular is something called Ma'idat uh, Rahman, where people will, uh, will make some kind of uh, uh, a tent where they uh, offer uh, the, the main meal at the sunset uh, for uh, anyone who is passing through, like you're not from the area and you just, in fact, you came here or for the needy people. And uh, the, 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 the good thing is you find Muslims are doing it and Christians are doing it and Jews are doing it. Every single one is, is trying to, to participate in this. And um, it got affected by the culture and the land and, and some other fun aspects. And that is uh, uh, one of the things that make it clear how the culture is being, uh, or how cultures in general, not just the Arabic culture, is being uh, uh, built and, and formed. Uh, it's religion, people, history, traditions, uh, uh, even political facts, whatever changes happen. So they get affected. and. Most of the time, and I, I, I remember it till today in Egypt, there are some celebrations and there are some festivals. Every single year when this, these festivals comes in, people will start to ask where that festival came from. And some people say, oh, it's a Paris uh, festival. So for example, we have something close to Easter, but it's not Easter, it's like one week after the Easter. So uh, 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 the religion Easter is being held in one day. A week after, we have what's called Shamin Nassim, or the Spring uh, uh, Festival. And you, you get this question, is it Easter? No. Is it the Pharaoh celebration or festival? No. Is it the, the, the Islamic? No. So you end up by the, the many years we're repeating it, the culture is formed up to a point you don't know where that came from. Uh, so finally, you have uh, the hospitality. So hospitality, uh, I think it was mentioned uh, quickly when uh, we saw the, the food part. So uh, Arabs are, are very generous, generous when it gets to hospitality. As a matter of fact, uh, for visitors, uh, if, if a visitor came to your house, they can stay up to three days without any reason. You have to host them, provide food and shelter, and be as generous as possible because uh, they are happy with this. And this came back from the heritage Back in the days when people used to travel by uh, camels and, 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 and uh, horses. So three days are, I mean, to give them enough time to, to, to rest and uh, share the food as much as possible. And uh, it, sometimes it gets hard because whenever you offer something, you cannot say no. People may get offended. And in some, some areas, uh, it will reflect that you're not a friend. Uh, so... Uh, even to a level in some areas, I, I know some areas, and uh, we have kind of more strict traditions. If in a wedding, for example, you get offered a cigarette and you don't smoke, you have to take it and light it up. But I don't smoke. Now, if you don't take it, that's uh, that means you don't wish uh, 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 good for the, the 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 groom and the bride. So uh, those are are things to have to 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 keep in mind. And actually, it's it's things that you, you would enjoy uh, when you to visit the Arab countries. Um, and yeah, uh, drinks will be offered all the time. So coffee, and it varies from place to place. So for example, in the, uh, in the Middle East, or like in the Asian part, uh, coffee comes at the beginning and comes with small cups where you keep drinking it with dates until the meal is, is prepared. While where when you go to the western uh, the the western part in, in Africa, uh, the meal comes in first. They don't offer much drinks before the meal to make sure you eat as much as possible, and then uh, drinks, especially tea, comes uh, comes after. Um, yeah, whenever you serve something, you accept it. Hospitality, friendly, generosity, and uh, later on when you deal with uh, uh, yeah, most of the Arabs they have. Uh, sense of humor, uh, most of the time will be sarcastic, so you'll get used to it after uh, time. So you may hear like double-worded meaning words flying here and there, 
but later on when you get to use it uh used to it it will be it will be fun um one of the big differences between the culture the uh, the middle east culture or the Arab culture to the culture here is uh the way you sit that's uh in the Arab culture is kind of disrespect to sit in and stretch your legs in front of uh, a gathering or any other person uh and it's kind of uh so bad if that person is older than you uh same thing as uh cross uh, leg like cross your legs which is a normal setting for most of the people uh, sometimes it's uh it's, it's a disrespect uh don't talk loudly it's just normal in all the cultures i would assume um yeah and meal will be usually a conclusion at uh to an event uh but most of the time the drink comes after um so yeah uh taking off shoes is uh one of the popular traditions that most of the the every country is held so shoes are taken off at the, the entrance uh, and that also have another uh, um, uh dimension which is related to their religion uh as as muslims when uh, they pray five, five times a day and uh in their prayers they they put their whole face in the in the floor so they try to keep it a, as much as clean as clean as much as possible because they pray in those areas um i think we spoke too long uh we had more to share but times ran and, and uh i hope it was interactive and uh you 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 liked it and i'm still hoping that we can get some questions yes thank you very much let's go ahead and give a round of applause to both of our professors thank you so yeah. much I learned so much, professors, everything that you were talking about. There's lots of wild moments for me. I never had heard about that or learned that. So if you look at the chat, you know, people have said that's very interesting, that they've never heard a lot of things that you talked about. So thank you so much to both professors. So we are a little bit out of time. Uh, we will be opening it up to questions. While people ask questions, I'm going to go ahead and kindly ask all of our students, our participants as well. I know we have some staff and faculty who attended today. I put a survey in the chat. If you can please open it up and uh, answer the survey, it's going to help us in our program. Uh, but yes, we're going to go ahead and open it up as students and participants fill out the survey. If anybody has any questions, I do have a question for both professors while people are doing the survey. I know you talked about how people, the men and the women, have to be like in separate rooms and stuff, and they can't flirt or anything. And then you talked about marriage. So how how does that work? How do how do how would are, are the marriages arranged or how do people meet? Like how do they talk? Like can you explain a little bit? Okay, let, let me, me uh, talk. So I'll, 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 I'll highlight something, something about, about this. this uh, about this, uh, uh, about the segregation. So the segregation segregation came uh, or came later on uh, in. Uh, to to with consideration of the religion so uh women covers right and when they gather uh they may want to 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 feel free and take off their covers and 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 that's kind of like uh you know a, a girl's party so uh in this way they have their uh their own uh area and they feel uh, like no 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 restrictions and that why you'll find this more uh popular in the uh in the gulf area like the asian part but when you get to the uh, the North African part, it's not. So, for example, in Egypt, that's not mm, as much common as uh, how is it in in in, uh, in Saudi Arabia or or UAE. Uh, but it came from uh, this perspective. Uh, getting back to marriage, uh, some marriages are uh, arranged, but nowadays most of them are not, because um, the fact that when there is a gathering, uh, a big gathering, they they sit segregated has nothing to do with them being interacted in uh, in work, in college, in, uh, in, 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 in schools, and many other places. So it just comes to, uh, you know, it's like, yeah, let's put it this way, like a men's party and a girl's party at the same time. So this is how it go, and this is where the segregation came from. Uh, so men can go and play, you know, do whatever, like play PlayStation, whatever guys do, and the girls, doing uh chat and have fun and dance and do whatever with no restrictions and the kids will be everywhere making noise <laughs> so yeah i hope that answered the question yes thank uh, you so much you wanna professor add something uh you want to add something yeah okay 
I think I see we have some questions here, right? Yeah. We can take the first question. What? We do have one question um, in the chat from the Dal food. Uh, Dalia Esquivel is asking, do you teach others how to read or write? What is that? What is that? What is Dalia is asking, do you teach others how to read or write? Um, I guess in, in your culture, maybe so I think that's what she's meaning. Do you teach others how to read or write? Yes. <laughs> is it for Arabic? Is it for Arabic? Do you mean Arabic? In class? Is you mean in the class? Or um, what do you mean in uh, the class? Yes. Yes. Uh, read, write, uh, greet people, grammar, uh, uh, some culture. Uh, kind of uh, beginning Arabic and uh, intermediate too. Thank you, Professor. We have here another question. Last question as we wrap the event today is, what if you're allergic to all the food that you talked about? What if you're allergic to nuts or strawberries? How do you go about saying that? Okay, the other people. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, this is our question. Um, I mean, nowadays start people start to learn about those stuff, um, but I don't know. Like, I noticed that uh, there are more um, food allergy here in the in the in the U.S. compared to the Arab world. Uh, maybe it's uh, it's developing. I, I don't know. Uh, but on the other hand, most of the foods don't have much nuts. Uh, so nuts will not be a, a big consideration because most of the food will be um, uh, will be high carb. Let's put it this way. <laughs> so uh, 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 pastries will be uh, rice, meat, um, yeah, most of these. But for sure, if you're allergic, I mean, uh, as I mentioned, things nowadays with um, uh, social media and the communication and uh, the opportunities for every single person. Uh, having a phone and uh, Facebook and, and Instagram and whatever to learn about other cultures and, and what people understand. So they start to develop uh, these these perspectives. So it shouldn't be a problem right now. Um, as I said, no, you say no. Otherwise, uh, you may still eat it, but try to avoid that that uh, that item that would have this because you will never be offered one item. Uh, be so yeah, just, uh, I, I want to mention something here for the food. If you just you may say it simply because like I have a aller uh, allergy and I don't want to eat uh, this food, they will serve something else for you at the moment, and you will have a lot of other food. Uh, but it's it's, uh, it's like they 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 don't say you have to eat, but it's kind of like. Uh, um, like kind of love for for everyone, uh, you're their guest and they want you to feel warm and uh, welcome uh, in their house. So this is the this is the this is the thing. But if you're uh, allergic, you have to say that. Okay, it's, it's very simple. Yes, <laughs> thanks. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you so much to both professors. We learned so much, and everybody who attended, faculty, professor, students, please pick up your free goodie bag sponsored by the Arabic Club student organization. They have a goodie bag. I believe Juan, I don't know if Juan is still here, but Juan, you know, he worked on putting a lot of uh, different candies and different snacks there. And I think he went to San Antonio to grab uh, from the Arabic culture uh, little snacks and candies. So everybody free. So please pick them up either tomorrow or Friday. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you to our professors. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you all for attending. Yeah, uh, we were we were happy for you being here. Thanks so much. Have a good day. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Uh, Thank you.